Hello and welcome to the BPP Pro Bono Street Law Project. Street Law is a free public legal education project that aims to increase individuals' knowledge about their rights and responsibilities on various areas of the law through interactive workshops. In this video, we will demonstrate how we deliver these workshops and facilitate audience engagement in an online space. Throughout this, we will be demonstrating slides from different workshops. At the start of each workshop, we run through the objectives of the session. Some of our workshops discuss sensitive topics such as FGM or forced marriage. We ensure that it is clear to the audience that we understand if they need to step away for a moment. We also run through etiquette for the session to help ensure all audience members feel comfortable during the workshop. Okay, so in our workshop on FGM today, we aim to understand the following as set out on, on this first slide. So firstly, what FGM is, the short and long-term consequences of FGM, the legal position on FGM in the UK, how you can help raise awareness about FGM, where you can seek help if you, a family member or a friend is at risk. We do understand that this is a sensitive topic and this workshop will contain images and accounts that attendees may find distressing. So if you do need to step away from the session at any point, please feel absolutely free to do so. So as we're discussing a sensitive issue in today's session, we wanted to highlight some etiquette and some rules just going forward. These include taking a non-judgmental approach. This topic can stimulate really interesting discussion and debate. So that we just ask that all audience members listen to what each other has to say and doesn't make assumptions about their values, experiences or feelings. One of the benefits of delivering workshops online is that we can engage the audience in different ways through using the chat box, polls and the mic. We recognise that some attendees may be more comfortable using one method or another, so we ensure they are able to do this throughout. We think this interaction is important to keep the audience engaged in a fun way and it also embeds learning. So on starting work, you are entitled to receive written particulars of your employment, which sets out some of your main rights and some of your main employment rights. This should be provided on day one of starting any new position and applies to both employees and workers alike. Employees and workers are entitled to an itemised pay statement, breaking down the hours worked, their pay rates and pay received for those hours, and a pay slip which should include the gross amount of wages and any deductions made and the reasons for those deductions. So if I can now just ask the audience to type in the chat box, which is on the right hand side, what some of the main things that you guys would want to see and to know about in relation to your terms and conditions of employment. see that people are typing. Oh, perfect. So we've got sick pay, salary, both very good answers, holiday entitled, entitlement, that's always very important, any notice periods, again, we've got any holiday. Okay, great. We will now apply what we, have, what we know and what we've learned about different types of discrimination to the scenario in front of us. So a clothes shop requires that all employees must not wear any hats, scarves or caps at work because it does not fit with their brand image. Is this indirect or direct discrimination? So if you can see on the um, in the chat right in the chat box on the right hand side, if you could just react and if you think it's either direct or indirect discrimination by either providing a thumbs up or a heart. I see lots of people think that it's indirect discrimination. This is this is correct. It is indirect discrimination. So we have Louis, who was walking through the centre of town at 3 a.m. on Saturday. He had his hoodie up when he was stopped by PC Blue, who was not dressed in uniform. Louis was told he would be breaking the law if he didn't give his name and address, so he felt forced to do so. Louis was unable to identify the policeman who stopped and searched him. OK, so do we think that there was anything wrong with how this stop and search was carried out? So if you would like to, to put any thoughts into the chat on the right hand side, or if you want to raise your, your virtual hand, then I can call on people and feel absolutely free to come onto the mic and, and contribute. What do we think? Is 
Isabel, I can see you've put your hand up. Do you want to come on the mic? Thank you. I think one of the problems here is that PC Blue was not wearing uniform, um, so the policeman didn't identify himself properly, which was an issue. Fantastic. Absolutely. And Helen has said in the chat here as well um, that they should have provided their, their identity to Louis. And yes, brilliant. Bethan as well here that, that you could not identify the officer. Wonderful. You put your crooks uh, that you found the, the crooks of the problem. Exactly. Um, so because PC Blue didn't, didn't have his uniform on, um, he should have shown his warrant card or proof of ID um, to uh, to Louis. Um, he should have given his name, his number and the station to which he was attached. So Louis can make a complaint about these, these matters um, and he's got 12 months to do so. In each workshop, we provide tailored sources of further information and signpost to where they can receive support and legal advice. For some of our more sensitive topics, such as forced marriage and FGM, we discuss potential warning signs, which could mean that someone is at risk and where to turn to if audience members are worried about someone. So there are some uh, signs on the slide here. Um, these might include, for example, uh, a decline in motivation or performance at school or being scared about an upcoming summer holiday, perhaps. Of course, there could be perfectly reasonable explanations for these, but there is help available if you're worried, as we can see on this next slide. There are lots of agencies that can help a victim or a potential victim with advice and support, such as the, the police, the forced marriage unit and social care. This information is tailored to the topic to help attendees. For example, in our consumer law workshop, we provide information on what they can do if they are unhappy and where they can seek legal advice. What can you do if you're unhappy with how you have been treated as a consumer? So the starting point, I'd recommend that you talk or write to the trader to try and resolve the issue at hand. Start by explaining the issue, your rights and how you want the issue to be fixed. You must give the opportunity for the trader to put it right before exploring alternative options. Alternative options are seen on the slide and these include things such as contacting the consumer helpline, who will then put you through to an advisor from Citizens Advice, who can give you practical and impartial advice. You could also complain to an ombudsman, who is an independent person that investigates complaints and about different organisations for free, and they might be able to help you resolve the issue at hand. Finally, you could bring a court claim, but that should be a final step. On the next slide, as you will see here, we provided some other sources of further help for consumers. The websites on this screen provide further information on kind of consumer laws and where you can seek advice. Thank you for watching this demonstration video. If you would like to get in touch with the Street Law team to discuss organising a workshop, please email streetlawteam at bpp.com.